Hey guys, what's up? This is Bharat. You're watching iGAN and today we're going to be comparing the OnePlus 6 with the Honor 10 and the Asus Zenfone 5Z. So let's quickly get started. The flagship market is getting exceedingly populated and the OnePlus series is what started it. Now OnePlus every year launches a flagship killer which then it proceeds to launch a T variant like a 3T or a 5T to replace the flagship variant with the current gen specs towards the end of the year. This time around, however, there are more options in that price bracket and OnePlus, while they have increased their price segment going upwards of 30 to 35, now even crossing the 40,000 threshold, you do have additional options available in the market, including the Honor 10 and the ASUS Zenfone 5Z. Price-wise, all three of these phones are basically in the same bracket. The OnePlus 6 starts at around 35,000 rupees, the Honor 10 around 33,000 rupees, whereas the ASUS Zenfone 5Z among the cheapest starting at 30,000 rupees. Now, basically what ASUS and Honor are trying to do is sort of capture the market space from OnePlus, which is basically dominating the space for a while now. So if you have the money, which one should you pick in this price bracket? And what should be your preference among the three? The OnePlus 6 is an obvious option for a lot of people, not only because of the hype that it's created, but because some of the features and the performance capability that the device offers. Out of the three, the OnePlus 6 seems to perform the best as far as benchmarks and day-to-day -day operations are concerned, but mostly all three of these devices have similar specifications. So to start off, the Asus Zenfone 5Z and the OnePlus 6 both have Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 chipsets. The Honor 10, however, uses Huawei's own Kirin chipset, which may differ in terms of performance, but does offer stunningly impressive AI capabilities, which the other two phones not yet offer. Now these phones are also relatively big with big screens. The OnePlus 6 coming in with a 6.28 inch display, whereas the Asus Zenfone 5Z with a 6.2 inch and the Honor 10 with a 5.84 inch. The Honor 10 is also the easiest to handle with one hand because of its slimmer design, but all three of these have similar display specifications or display resolutions. The OnePlus 6 has a 2280 by 1080 pixel resolution, giving it a 19 to 9 aspect ratio whereas the Asus Zenfone 5Z has a 2246 by 1080 pixel resolution, also giving it a 19 to 9 aspect ratio. The Honor 10 has a 2280 by 1080 pixel resolution, and out of the three, this also has the largest screen to body ratio, making it a slightly better looking phone from the front. All three of these phones also have notches and an option to hide the notch in case you don't like the notch display on your phone. All three of these phones start with six gigabyte of RAM in their base variants, and while the OnePlus 6 and the Asus Zenfone 5Z offer up 8GB variants, the Honor 10 does not. Storage-wise, again, 64GB and 128GB seem to be popular options, but two of these devices, the OnePlus 6 and the Asus Zenfone 5Z, are also available in a 256GB variant. Now, as far as design and build quality is concerned, all three of these phones are similarly designed and also similarly built. All of them have a glass front and a glass back, the OnePlus 6 and the Asus Zenfone 5Z do have a fingerprint sensor on the back. This is something the company has had to do to get a better screen to body ratio on the front of their phones, whereas Honor decided to keep the fingerprint sensor below the display. Now this is not a physical button and it's not depressed, it's flush with the glass on the front and it feels like it's behind the glass, almost like a in-display fingerprint sensor. This also allows Honor to give you one button navigation or navigation through the user interface using this fingerprint sensor. The OnePlus 6 also offers finally some IP protection, so the phone is water resistant now officially and is also dust resistant. The rest of the two phones don't offer this feature. Now, while the Asus Zenfone 5Z and the Honor 10 are available in typical colors or fixed colors, the OnePlus 6 is the only device that is constantly launching in new color options, starting off with the Avengers Edition, then the white and now even the red color, which is one of my most favorite versions of red or variants or hues of red that I've seen, it looks absolutely brilliant in a candy apple red. OnePlus also gets the upper advantage of a near stock-like Android experience, which makes its performance capabilities one of the best in this price bracket. Scoring anywhere from 280,000 and upwards on benchmarks, this phone outperforms most of the competition in this price bracket, from day-to-day -day performance to things like gaming, which you'll thoroughly enjoy on this device.
while gaming the speakerphone may be loud enough but it's not quite yet satisfying i would prefer something like dual forward firing speakers but that is not the case with the OnePlus 6 and they are not available. So the sound still remains a little bit of an issue. I would recommend using headphones if you're watching videos, movies, or connecting to an external speaker to give you a better sound output from the device. As far as the operating system is concerned, you get your usual set of customizations, a few new features, you still continue to get face unlock, you do now get gestures that allow you to navigate through the operating system without using the navigation bar at the bottom. So much like the iPhone, you get gesture based navigation. You also get the ability to hide the notch like I mentioned earlier and then you continue to get several customizations that have been offered in Oxygen OS. It's also one of the best supported communities as far as uh, the operating system is concerned and OnePlus also often pushes out constant software updates. Even though it's not the fastest in updating the operating system from the previous gen to the next gen, but OnePlus is definitely one of the companies uh, that does push out quick software updates so you will constantly get security updates and bug fixes. Now in terms of the way it's designed, despite the large screen to body ratio and the fingerprint sensor, the phone still looks one of the best from the front. You get a nice edge to edge bezel less design. You do of course have the notch on the top, which may be disappointing to some people. Now the phone does run Huawei's EMUI, which you can either love or hate. In most cases, it does tend to slow down the phone and hinder the user experience quite a lot in comparison to say a stock Android but it's definitely not something that will push you down or push you away from buying this device. It is still extremely customizable. It still does offer up things like one button navigation or gestures for navigation. And you also have the ability to hide the notch like in the case of the OnePlus 6. You also get face unlock and your usual features. Plus you get lots of customization along with shortcuts and the ability to duplicate apps. So uh, this is also a feature that a lot of people like. So you can have two simultaneous versions of uh, WhatsApp running on the phone to allow you to utilize the dual SIM capabilities properly. Now the phone does fall behind on things like benchmarks, even though things like gaming are not a problem and you can enjoy gaming quite properly on this device. The speaker is also loud enough and so is the earpiece. So whether you're watching videos or playing games or consuming content on the Honor 10, it looks good on the display. It's got great viewing angles and it's also got loud enough speakers Although things like benchmarks, the numbers are considerably less in comparison to something like a OnePlus 6. Now out of the three, the ASUS Zenfone 5Z is the cheapest and it also has the most squarish design. It is considerably wide from the front and it is considerably difficult to use with one hand. Now even though it does run the latest Android OS, the latest publicly available Android OS, it does have its own skin on top of it which sort of slows down the user experience quite a lot. Now granted, it does offer up certain customizations that people would like. And you also get features like Zenmoji in an attempt to sort of take on Memoji or Animoji from Apple. The phone still lacks certain basic features and uh, the certain finesse that you would find on the other two devices as far as the operating system and the usage of it is concerned. You still do get features like twin apps allowing you to duplicate apps uh, you also have uh, a kids mode and an easy mode to make it useful or easier for people to use this device you also have lots of other customizations whether it's a pocket mode or glove mode allowing you to use the screen with your gloves on or fingerprint gestures allowing you to sort of pull down the notification panel with the fingerprint sensor on the back but these customizations aside uh, the overall performance from the device does get hindered thanks to the user interface while whether you're gaming or watching videos, uh, you will not feel the difference in terms of performance from the OnePlus 6. You also see that benchmark scores as far as Antutu is concerned are quite close. The speakers on the Asus Zenfone 5Z are quite respectable and loud enough for a day-to-day -day gaming usage. And also watching videos should be comfortable on the device itself. Again, for the best experience, I do recommend attaching an external speaker or good quality headphones.
The cameras on all three of these phones are, are unique and distinctive. The Honor 10, for example, offers AI features or AI capabilities, which do offer up automatic scene detection. In certain cases, this works really well, especially if you're taking pictures of a landscape or pictures of things uh, like food or objects. This automatically recognizes objects and gives you a really good result from the camera with automatic tweaking of the images and such. The front facing camera is also pretty good, producing some really nice selfies, producing some really nice uh, behind the subject bokeh or blur. This allows you to get portrait shots from the front facing camera without requiring dual lenses or without requiring any special capabilities. The main camera also offers up some really nice sharp photos. You also have a full manual mode that allows you to get some really good pictures if you do understand how to customize uh, your shot before you capture it. Video recording is restricted to 4K at 30 frames per second and it's the only phone out of the three that has uh, only 30 frames per second and uh, that may be due to the chipset or that may be due to a software limitation that Honor could easily remove and make available the 60 FPS. OnePlus 6 offers up a really good camera option now again available with the google camera as well so if you do want to install that that is an option that you do have allowing you to get really nice uh, blur on the front facing camera if you do decide to take portrait shots from the front facing camera you do have that feature now enabled giving you really good quality results the main camera also has excellent sharpness good amount of dynamic range and good amount of color as well focusing is almost always on point. In certain cases, we found that the OnePlus 6 does miss out, especially with the stock camera. With the Google camera, this does get improved quite a lot. The OnePlus 6 does also offer up 4K at 60 frames per second, one of the smoothest uh, video capabilities. Also offers up image stabilization, which is optical, giving you a really smooth video quality. This image stabilization is also applicable in images giving you an overall sharp result from your images as well. The ASUS Zenfone 5Z out of the three seems to produce the lowest quality results as far as the cameras are concerned. It does suffer with issues in terms of sharpness, contrast, and dynamic range. While these features work really well, in comparison to the other three devices, we feel that the ASUS Zenfone 5Z doesn't live up to expectations as far as the images are concerned. It does offer up 4K video at 60 frames per second and uh, really good quality front facing camera captures as well. But the overall image captures uh, seem to be soft in certain cases, missing focus in certain cases, missing color completely. So that is something that uh, you need to be aware of. Again, these are things that ASUS could possibly fix with a software update or you could possibly fix uh, by installing a different camera application. But in terms of a stock camera experience, the ASUS Zenfone 5Z quite does not live up to the Honor 10 and the OnePlus 6. Overall, out of the three, the OnePlus 6 is the priciest. It's also the best in terms of build quality, design, and overall software experience and overall experience. The OnePlus 6 has been a pick for a lot of people and is definitely a pick for the flagship killer market. The Honor 10 coming in a close second, allowing you lots of options and capabilities if you're not purely looking for benchmark scores. As far as day-to-day -day usage is concerned, both of these phones are quite close, almost neck and neck. And the OnePlus 6 does stand out with its slightly larger display and uh, some more color options and some more software features and performance capabilities. The ASUS Zenfone 5Z, while the cheapest and the most affordable out of the three, a little bit of a letdown as far as the camera quality and the camera images are concerned. Also, the use of their custom skin hinders the overall user experience while not completely slowing it down. But in comparison to the OnePlus 6 and the Honor 10, it does fall behind. Now, there is also another issue which is regarding software updates. For now, all three of these devices seem to be pushing out software updates. We're not too sure if in the future they will continue to push out timely updates, but all three of these devices are supposedly getting Android P whenever it becomes available. Now, OnePlus has had issues with service centers for quite a while, and a lot of people are struggling getting service or getting parts in time. Also, some of the parts for the OnePlus 6 seem to be extremely expensive. So if you do end up busting your display, 
uh, it's something that's going to cost you dearly. In the case of Asus and Honor, the service center setup seemed to be good. But again, there are several reports of a poor service or poor after sales service. We're not too sure which of the three evils is the best. If any of you guys do have good experiences or bad experiences with after sales support from any three of these brands, do let us know in the comment section below so we can get a better idea. But as far as we're concerned, ASUS seems to have the largest service and support network in the country. As far as battery is concerned, on paper, all three of them also have similar size batteries. The OnePlus 6 does offer up a good battery backup. Thanks to its close to stock Android user experience, also the dash charge allows you to quickly charge up your phone in case you need additional battery in the day. On a typical day, the OnePlus 6 would last you a full day of use with about five to six hours of screen on time, but this may vary depending on what kind of screen on time you may have. So if you are constantly playing PUBG, your OnePlus 6 may not last you for six hours. The ASUS Zen 4 and the Honor 10 do not perform as well as the OnePlus 6 as far as battery life is concerned, but they do hold up their own. You will still continue to get a full day's use from both of these devices as well, but the performance of the battery may not be as much as six hours of screen on time. Again, this will vary depending on your usage, but in comparison to how we were using it, we found that the Honor 10 and the ASUS Zen 5Z offer up less battery backup time. While phone call strength and phone call capability networks seem to be the best on the OnePlus 6 in terms of connectivity, in terms of network strength, a lot of people have constantly complained about the earpiece volume of the OnePlus 6. Now, this is something that we faced as an ongoing issue. And even though OnePlus has tried to rectify this with software updates frequently, it has still not found a proper resolution. The speaker volume or the earpiece volume of the OnePlus 6 still continues to be low and it could possibly be fixed with a software update, but for now it seems to still be an issue several months into the launch of the device. The Honor 10 on the other hand has really nice sounding speakers, including the loudspeaker and the earpiece. So call quality, even though not as good as the OnePlus 6, you will get good quality audio from your calls uh, through and through. The same is the case with the Asus Zenfone 5Z. We found the speaker and the earpiece along with the microphone to give you a good overall output. So call quality from the rest of the two devices is pretty impressive. Well, that was it for this video. We hope this helped you decide which one is going to be your next flagship killer if you are deciding to buy any of these three phones. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a part of Team IGAN. This has been Bharat. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.